This is Johan Suotri from Halt to Run. This video will be part two for using Google Drive, file uploads and signing in, signing out. In the part one, we went through how to uh, use the sign in and sign out for Google Drive authentication. So just a quick overview. I'm using as a demo app photo docs in this and there is a series of photos logged in here somebody would say image yay comments and it's a priority of red you can do markings in here okay now you have I don't know hundreds 50, 20 images and we want to now upload this into our Google Drive. Of course we are already signed in and we start upload progress. It compiles and uploads into Google Drive like so. And we go into our Google Drive. We have the photo docs report in here and we can see all the images and comments compiled in here as a report which now can be worked with power tools such as word on a computer okay looks quite okay we got all the images for this report but that's not the point. <clears throat> we now want to learn how to uh, upload into Google Drive. And while we do this, uh, we want to modify a little bit of our code so that like you see in here, this, this is currently now activity based task. We want to get rid of that and pass that into our background service so that it's not activity dependent because it'll get killed as a task when the user finishes this activity like so. Okay, so it's not good. And we want to uh, get rid of this progress bar in here, which is also activity based and instead we want to get a notification in here that holds shows the current status of the uh, current tasks for uploads. So quite a lot to do, but before we start, let's go and quickly take a look what I do. So you can go into holdtorun.com and in here you can see the applications currently that I work on. This one is Photodocs that we use as a demo. You can get a quick look in here or go directly into Google Play and try it out yourself. Good, let's start. So I used to start my upload after compiling the, uh, the word report in here. So that's not something you do but in my application, I have to compile the report when it was done. And I know it exists because it has a valid URI. I used to start upload as in here. But now we won't do that in activity. Therefore, I'm going to delete this in here and we have to establish this in our service class. So delete. <clears throat> then delete. And now I have a request to start some action for my service. So we are passing in request of action start. So let's see in here, passing in action start, I have a enum class with start and stop. 
for service actions states in there then I have task type for the service which is just a key value that I can differentiate in the future this will be upload task <clears throat> and we're gonna give a file name so file name is something you come up however you want to name it mine is just a header and a timestamp so it is always uh, a unique name and these are always gonna be docx files it's a word report so mime file is mime type is something I pass also into this service okay now we have key values to start a service request so then inside a scope main we start intent for my service class now this video will not include how to establish service from ground up so you just have to understand that we're gonna be talking about a service class which can handle long-lasting tasks and uh, do the actual upload and download functions within so in here we're gonna base our drive manager class to get the results from the upload if it's success or not so this service will maintain live it's live as long as i want to so it doesn't matter if we close the activity like so it's gonna con keep on handling to listen these functions because uh, we're gonna be having this drive manager in here at the second we start this service so it'll keep the service running but we'll be focusing to get files uploaded into the drive but you have to understand the concept now it's gonna be done within a service so anyhow we need to pass in those values in with keys task type then we have a key of file name and we have a key of mime type so with these we can then <clears throat> get these from the intent extra and identify what kind of a file we're gonna be dealing with so these keys are something that I'm just holding in an object that I can query from any type of activity or a class okay then we check Android version created an S and we can we can start foreground service there's a little differences on how the errors are going to be handled so therefore I launch these with different error handling maybe you don't need to do so I have I've had some weird issues in earlier projects therefore it is set up like it is in here okay now we can start migrating are in a class of drive manager regarding these functions within into our service class so I'm just gonna be quickly cleaning up from here that's not gonna be residing in here anymore and we have to do markings to re-establish these in here okay so now we are in our service class and we have we want to um, establish this big google drive manager class into the service instead of the activity so okay I have variable in here Google Drive Manager 
and we're gonna now create inner class which extends this drive manager class. So let's go somewhere in a suitable place where we have a we have some kind of a mm -mm. yeah in here. <clears throat> Let's copy paste in here in the class. It extends this drive manager class so we can get our hands on those open functions. And let's mark it to do override functions. So before we implement this, let's get familiar what this class actually does and uh, how it's handled in our service. So we need to uh, find on start command. So from the activity operating tasks into a service class always go, comes through on start command. So in the activity we passed in uh, additional extra information, put extra uh, infos in the intent. So let's assume we have already successfully started this service and we could directly go into handling our transfer task with the intent content coming from the onStore command. So in here we can now retrieve those extras from get string extra or whatever parse label extra from the intent. So we need task type. This identifies as that hey we want to handle upload task for instance. Okay. We need file name of course and mine type. Those are critical for us to handle any file folder root systems for the Google Drive. Okay. We check they are not null, so we have valid data from the uh, intent extra. We check this is going to be upload task. Okay. And before we can start anything, of course, we need to get a file. So I'm using my custom class to uh, add my file, so called file tool. I pass in the file in the activity we created Java file for this word during the word compilation. So I pass in name and mind type. And with this function, I can again return that file if it exists or not. So with the file name, we're just going to be looking for from our internal directory. There's going to be file dir and files with that dir and name. And if it's not file, we return some file. Or if it fails, we return null. Okay. So let's see what do we do now? What do we do with that file? Here. Okay. We returned some file, so it must exist and we start upload. Okay, now we pass in the Google account, of course. So this is the first time we are using Google Drive for the Drive class for this service. So in here, in the part one, we went through how you can check if it's logged in or not and return the Google sign in account. So that's what we're doing in here. Okay. We need the account. Then we pass in the file that we actually want to upload file name and mime type. Okay. And in here. Now we have this start upload request and it used to be in the activity class. So what do we do with these infos? First, we get the service from the Google Drive class. So in the part one, we didn't use 
this function yet, but this is now must do to uh, do anything with the drive. So you have to return so-called drive service with this one. To return it, you use Google account credentials using OAuth2 and context. You pass in the drive scopes you want to deal with. So these has to be the exact scopes. I only need drive file and drive app data. That's, those are the ones that I initially signed in and validated this app to be used with to begin with. So those are the ones that Google is going to accept this application to use for Drive API. Okay, then we're just going to be returning, sorry, sign, we assigned the sign-in account, so it contains the credentials, and then we return the Drive service. So it's going to work if these are valid. Okay. And yeah, you have to pass in the application name in here for the drive builder and credentials, of course. So let's see what are we doing now. The final check then is that some file, hopefully valid file, actually contains data. If not, we're just going to inform no data to upload. OK, it makes sense. Finally, we have permission to start upload. So we have a relevant file and file name in our transfer tasks, which is my custom object class. We are adding this file into a hash map for file name. OK, we are following how many files we should have in in transit. OK. And then with the Google Drive Manager, which is our inner class in here that we just established, yet we're not handling any override functions for it, but it extends this specific class so we can now accept the functions of this. So we have to pass in service, file name, the actual file that we want to upload and mine type. Okay, now let's quickly get familiar with this Google Drive Manager, how we upload files. So with our upload file function, we pass in the Google Drive service file name and the actual file that we are about to upload and mime type. And we launch this asynchronous task in a coroutine scope of IO. So the first thing we want to uh, build our root folder system. So we are always going to be having root folder and then more specific folder based on the MIME type. So I have standardized my root folder system so that always the first root folder is the app name for Todocs, then images, videos, documents, or uncategorized. OK. This application pretty much only handles doc documentations because they are always docx MIME types. So we end up with Photodocs and documents root folder list then we <clears throat> have to search if the root system already exists for the parent folder one which is the uh, the, uh, the app name so we first search for that one in our search function we pass in the drive service the first index of the root folder here and uh, mime type of Google Drive type folder. OK, in the search, we have page token and correct file variable. If we happen to find it, we're just going to assign the found file to be this one, which we can then return as a 
folder which is type of file so to query anything as a search we build our result services files list and set queue this is the query we are finding folder named of our root folder with mime type of google drive folder from drive space set fields so these are fields that we're going to be searching with those queries okay set page token and execute then we want to iterate the files through the results of files and if the file has the same name that we are searching for and it's not trashed it means it's not in the trash bin then we will assign that file to be the correct file okay and we end our uh, query with the page token result next page token because this is gonna be in a do while page token is not null okay so that's how we finish this loop and we return that correct root folder as a google file okay so what happens if we don't find anything it doesn't yet exist then we have to create that root folder again we pass in service root folder name from the index one of this list and mime type so let's go and see how do we create folders so parent id hmm why are we passing in are we passing in no we're telling this is the actual root it doesn't have any parents okay so this is the first root because it is parent id is null then we just tell the parent root is gonna be singleton list google drive root and google drive root is written as a root okay now we have parent folder for this one that's the most base root folder that i know in google drive system then we have to build our folder metadata based on google drive file format set parent as a parent root set mime type as based on google drive folder mime and name which is gonna be the name from our root variable okay then we say services files create with folder metadata and execute and we created our folder type of google file and we can return it now so that's how we search if we fail we create now we have our first root folder named as a root folder of photodocs okay then we check did we fail in the creation or search of this parent root folder if we did it's null we're gonna stop this sequence with return and call our override function with the result of what we have of course with false and our google drive file being null then we know how to handle this later on in our service okay but of course we're not gonna fail so we, we can continue so now <clears throat> our root folder system contains two folders so we pretty much repeat the same step for the next folder and we get it from the index one so our root folder system contains always two folders the root and then the actual mime type based image videos and documents in this case okay that's gonna be named as documents folder so step two we repeat 
the uh, identical search or create to create another folder okay then we again check if we failed to create that one if we did not then we continue this probably can be simplified to handle that as a iteration from index 0 to 1 but I might modify that later on then we have to continue to create that file okay so first we want to search if our file already exists or not so I'm using just to be sure as this is a synchronous task I launched these web calls search calls in with context to ensure that this thread doesn't continue continue into the next step until I'm finished I think it's not truly really needed anymore because they are handled inside one coroutine thread and I'm not actually launching any child threads inside this thread anymore so they should be handled in a correct order anyway so I'm just being cautious in here I used to do it like this okay let's search our file so we pass in again the service the Google Drive service we pass in our file name and MIME type and what is happening in our actual file search so we have our service of drive file name and MIME type and uh, we didn't pass in search for trash files so it's gonna take the, the default value of files makes sense we're not we don't want to search our file from trashed files so again we have page token then we have an instance variable ready to go for if we find a correct file type of google drive files and we build our search query so if we don't look for search files it's gonna look like name is file name and mime type is mime type and trashed files is false okay else we look any files in the drive system with the file name and mime type this can be also simplified probably by just placing that true or false value in here with the same query should do the, that job well okay then we launch our do while page token is not null and we start services files list set queue query we pass in our query sentences from drive space and with the fields where it should look are these so this works for me i'm not looking anything else okay and set page token that page token and execute and then again we iterate through with the file through the result files and when we hit with the file name to be exact of our search file name we assign that file into our correct file of google drive remember these are google drive files not java files anymore and we set the next page token to our page token to break this do while loop okay and then we return our correct file as a google drive file okay now we have probably maybe existing file so then we continue to create media content so media content we will need if we found a file and we want to update it or it was null and we have to create it so 
we create media content by using Java class of file content and passing in our mind type and the file, the file that we want to upload. Okay. Then we check if we found existing file that should be updated. Let's assume that we did and we launch update file function. Okay, we pass in service, we pass in the existing Google Drive file and our file name and media content also. Let's see what we do in the update file. Okay, if we found and now we start upload update function for that file. Okay, we build metadata for through Google file set name our file Google existing Google Drive file name and MIME type from our existing Google Drive MIME type. Okay, makes sense. We ensure that it stays the same. Then we create our upload progress listener. This is a custom class that we have to code. So I created in here in this same class this so-called inner class upload progress listener and we pass in the file name so we can identify this later on from a hash map and in here we have to extend media http uploader progress listener then we can get our hands on the progress changed override function and we can start following these uploader states being initiation started I'm just logging it. Initiation complete. Again, I'm just logging in that one. And then we have actual media in progress. And through the uploader dot progress multiplied by 100, we can now start passing in the file name with the progress into our open function. And this is something we'll be tracking from the service class via override function so we can access these values okay then we also want to track when complete when this transfer is upload transfer is complete we can just call our media http transfer complete pass in file name to get identified which one and state if it's upload function true because i'm also calling this one from download progress listeners I'm telling if it's download or upload so that's the way I can identify that one okay and as a third function open function we want to follow if it was cancelled so this might get cancelled to a, to a timeout exception or manual cancellation now there's not much about anything told how you can manually stop these progress listeners. So I had to come by this by myself. So I initiated task permit within each listener. And because I follow these in a hash map through the file names, I can just manually change this into false from those hash maps and in the next uploader upload call I check each time if it should be cancelled if it should be cancelled I'm just gonna call the uh, the function of transfer cancelled and throw cancellation exception that's gonna kill that upload progress as it is same with the uh, download progress listener Th to me this seemed to be the only way to actually kill this task if after it is initiated but okay it's working so we still have to do functions to listen these in the uh, service class it's not yet done but this is once tracking those within the drive manager okay so let's go back 
into our update call. So we started listener. We are passing in that into our transfer tasks object. So I told you this is going to be a hash map. So we're passing it with the file name and upload progress listener. That way we can access this anywhere. Then we set update request with service files update. And this is going to be the Google Drive file. It's going to have ID. We pass in the metadata that we just initiated in here and media content that we created before we call this one. Okay, then we set this update request to have uploader progress listener and we pass in this custom listener and we tell the size of upload chunks that it should use while uploading. So for the uploads I'm using default minimum chunk size which is okay for the downloads, I had to uh, divide it by 100 so I can actually see some progress and not just one step of, hey, it was downloaded after a time of waiting. So those seem to be working for me. Okay, then we say update request execute and we assign that to the Google file. Okay, and we return that Google file from this function. So that's how you actually update existing files. So we checked if we found any files we did, it's not null, then we're just gonna update that same file and return that file afterwards in here. What if we have to create new file. The file doesn't yet exist. So we pass in the drive service file name and we pass in the root folder ID that we want to create it into. So we had the folder number two which says documents and we have to pack, tell the Google ID from that one. These are always Google Drive file instances they have these reference values within and media content and mind type. <clears throat> okay, let's see. So first we tell that this is going to be parent root. So singleton list of parent ID. Then we build our file metadata from Google Drive set parents, parent root. We want to create this file in here set name for the file with our file name and set mime type with mime type. Okay, file metadata exists. Then again, we initiate our custom upload progress listener. So this class that we just went through that has all the capabilities to follow the progress and cancellations and complete statuses. And we are able to stop this manually if we have to. Okay, so let's go back to our create file. Then we pass in identically within to our transfer tasks hash map but with the file name identifier as a key value. We pass that in there so we can get our hands on that later. And identically we create the request from these Oops, here, a big change. This time we don't say update, like in here, but we say create new with the file metadata and media content. Okay, here we updated that specific Google file ID with the file metadata and media content. Okay, that's a big difference. Then we pass in the listener and tell the upload chunks and return this Google file by executing it. So, okay. Now we created new file. Anyhow, we end up 
with a Google file. And then the last thing is to just set true or false. Was it success or not? If it's null, it's false. If it's not null, it's true. And we can finally call this upload file request as an open function. We're also going to be listening this as an override function within our service when we get to uh, refactor the service to handle this drive manager. And now we have finally uploaded a file into our drive. So now we start building our inner class of drive manager into our service class. So it used to be in here directly in the activity class, but now I want to refactor the code so that all these override functions from our drive manager are handled in the background service. So let's see, this is our current upload file result from the drive manager here. I'll just copy paste this one into our drive manager class within the service class. There's going to be errors because I don't have that function and uh, I cannot handle that in here. So we need to uh, refactor these just a bit and uh, then let's say to do finish upload download. So let's see what we did in here. So I had function of <clears throat> let's copy paste that one quickly in here. Finish. It seems that when our drive manager with upload file calls us this upload file re result in our service we get the result values in here because we are extending that in our inner class of drive manager and we have an instance of it in here in the service class we check if the actual google file is not null and the result is okay. So both have to be true probably. Just by checking if the Google file is on null would validate the end result as well. So anyhow, it seems to keep the current app operating. I always have to call finish upload download because we get Okay, that's how I used to do it. Pass in file name, file. Okay. So we're always saying transfer tasks dot remove transit file name with that one. So this goes back into our transfer tasks object. And in here we have function which uses the file name to remove from that hash map, remove that object from hash map, okay, and remove the progress hash map object. Okay, so these are hash maps in here. If I want to follow the progress of that file name, I can now follow it through here. And then we had <coughs> files in transit, which holds a reference of the file with the file name. Okay, so those are removed always when we end the uh, upload. Let's go back to the drive service. So remove them from there. So then if the file is not null, which file, which file, okay, the file that we intended to upload 
makes sense. If it's not null, we also always try to delete that one because it is pretty much a cached file which doesn't need to exist in our phone anymore. So with my file tool, I just check if file exists, file delete. So this closes the loop because we had to initially create a Java file that we wanted to upload. We created that into our internal phone's memory. Makes sense to delete it once the uh, upload function is finished. Okay. Could I actually, because we're only handling upload files, I could directly just use these in here without a function. But for now, let's keep these in their own function. I might need to use it twice. Okay, then we start checking if the actual upload was success. Because if it was, we obviously are gonna have a reference of actual Google file and result is gonna be true. So finish, that's what we want to do. Hmm, I now, I'm now handling my application must do's in Finnish word upload. So <coughs> Finnish word upload and I want to pass in here value of transfer success. This is just an integer which is reserved to be used for snack bars. So if the user happens to use his phone in any of the activities, when my service pretty much calls this function, I pass in a snack bar value of success and I broadcast that with identifier of item upload. So I know uh, which broadcast receivers are receiving this and I get the snack bar value. So I can actually show the user if he happens to use the phone that hey, the down upload was finished and it was a success. And then he can close that snack bar. Okay, makes sense. That's what I'm trying to do in here. Not yet done, but always call the broadcast to activity from service. That's how you can interact from service to activities, at least in one way. Then is this is totally customized for my application to track down how many uh, word reports are generated and update the local accounts and insert the backend server accounts also during the compil after the success uh, upload. So those are reserved for you have for this application photodox you can use it certain amount as a freemium and after certain amount of compilations it becomes a paid version and you have to activate pro version to get unlimited word report uh, creations and that's for a lifetime. Anyhow, you gotta do what you gotta do and this is the tracking of that one. So, now it seems that my service can handle the upload file result, at least regarding if it is success. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we do if it is not success? In in the activity, we just used to activate the snack bar value of transfer cancel. Okay, makes sense. Now, I believe we just will use broadcast of transfer cancel. So, might may might make more sense if I just extract this 
totally from here in here like so and uh, snack bar value this was snack bar value cancel and in here <coughs> transfer success <clears throat> sorry okay now we are broadcasting into the activity classes of the results and that, that is totally separate function to handle the app specific aftermath so it seems our override function for upload file result coming from this Google Drive manager is correctly executed in our service class. Okay, let's go into <coughs> old activity and we're just gonna totally delete this one from here. And we have next to do function. Oh, sorry. This one was also handled. And now we have another to do in here. So media transfer complete. These actually also reside uh, inside our Google Drive Manager. And what I would like to do now is just handle all the results directly in here and reference all the aftermath with the transfer task object because then we can get our hands on into these ones from any place. So let's see, let's learn how we handled that in another application we have a inner class in here handling upload file result with kind of a similar logic this app also handled download file result and as i suspected we or we want to leave all these three transfer progress functions only into the manager class. Okay, <clears throat> let's start working with the media HTTP transfer progress. I think I have same names used in this application. And we're gonna change this one just a little bit just to make it more readable. <clears throat> and what this does now, we are not gonna keep it as an open function. There's not gonna be any Jetpack Compose uh, graphics joined in this one so that's why I deleted that one so in here let's take a look at the uploader progress listener so this will constantly be updated while the upload progresses with our listener of this one here okay so we get the progress value of percentage for a file name okay and we identify this as an upload or download so it can be used from any of the uh, progress listeners and i'm just logging the progress and i am assigning the progress value into my transfer tasks object into hash map okay 
with the file name as a key. So now we have our first progress values stored. Now we can access this pretty much from anywhere. Okay, good. Then, <clears throat> did we finish that? That's quite simple. Okay, now we have our hands on that one. Yep. Then, next one. Let's see what are we doing in our another application with the transfer complete. Hmm. Copy paste. That's the power of coding. Let's use that same in here. In our Google Drive Manager. So this will be called once we have a successful complete task coming from our upload progress listener. Okay. And we pass in file name and yes, it's going to be upload related. And we identify that in here. Okay, let's clean this a bit to be more readable. I'm just gonna delete that from there too. And let's paste this in here. No recompositions for graphics this time. And <clears throat> now we are assigning default value of zero when it's complete into that same hash map of a file name. So in here, this increments from one, two, three, finally at a hundred while it progresses, while transfer is complete. Okay, I just returned that into zero. Mm, maybe a hundred would be better. And at the same time, it seems within our transfer tasks singleton object, I call remove this from transit file name. So what do we do in here? Remove transit file name. So we passed in file name, we say files in transit, remove this. Okay, this is a hash map. As in here, we are removing that because it's complete. Okay, makes sense. This is also a place that we intend to remove this. And we also remove that from the files progress, which is also a hash map and which hold, holds the uh, progress values. Okay, it seems this seems totally unnecessary at this point, but let's keep it if I change my mind if it should not be removed in here after all. Okay. So we want to always toast. We want to always toast. So when it's complete and uh, we have detected it's an upload task, we also remove upload listeners. Okay, because we are storing these instances at the upload request. So now they have to be removed. Okay. So we pass in file name. And in here, we say upload listeners remove this makes sense. This listener is not used anymore. It's also a hash map of file upload listeners from our Google Drive Manager class here, upload progress listener class type. Okay, <clears throat> that's a correct place to remove it. Let's go back. And if no files in transit anymore, we toast upload success. So we only toast it once. We wait till it's totally cleared and we toast it once. The user now sees a text success. Okay, let's leave that as is. If for any reason this would be called 
with downloads, we just do the same thing. In transfer tasks, remove download listener with a file name. And here's also hash map of download instances for listeners and remove. Okay. We can remove the to do's from here. Seems quite okay that our media HTTP transfer complete is set up. Now the drive manager is totally driving this based on the uh, progress listener itself. Seems good. Then we have to handle the cancel. So with the cancel, we are able to uh, handle the uh, callbacks from the up upload progress or download progress listeners when either the instance of this itself initiates cancel we have just handled it as an else if it's not any of these states logical states coming from this progress change then it must be cancel or the most obvious one which we can ourselves uh, set to false through this task, task permit we can force it into cancellation exception during the uh, progress okay we're not yet calling this cancel function anywhere but i'll show you in a later phase where we actually change the status of this but here let's <coughs> set this up into more readable format as those above and I'm just gonna delete this one too and we use a good reference from earlier pro project here and again this is not entangled into jetpack compose graphics so no recompose hooks in here no optional toast references either in here so pretty much when our progress listener triggers this call pack for transfer cancel we um, transfer tasks file progress again just to be sure okay we set it to zero even though in the next step remove transit file name which this is concerning we actually again remove that file from transit hash map so it means it's not in in the progress anymore and ah oh, i'm lost <clears throat> And, and remove transit file name we also take it off from the files progress list yep okay so from this has map 2 we take it off and this holds the at the progress value okay the same always in finished or in cancel from progress listeners And of course we check if it belongs to the uploads we know if it's true or belongs to the downloads we know if it's true okay and always we toast the user Google Drive file transfer cancelled okay so it seems now all the states for progress complete and transfer cancel are now handled and all those three are driven primarily in this application by this upload listener but might as well be driven by this download progress listener so they are hooked to the same methods end methods okay now what else now we have to uh, 
go into our service class to see what to do next. Hmm. Let's see and how much did we have in here in our this is different application I use it as a reference so I handled upload file result in here I handled download file result in here and nothing else okay in our service we are handling upload file result we have finish upload download okay in its own function might not need to be like so and to do this doesn't have downloads yep we don't need that one so it seems might be that if we start the upload progress now our drive manager instance in here is actually very much able to uh, handle the callbacks in this inner class now because it extends this Google Drive manager that we just set up at least for the uploads. Mm -hmm. Okay so we're now in the service class and uh, it seems that our inner drive manager extending the google drive manager is ready for uploads a small modification i did in here i added from my transfer tasks object class if for any reason this fails even though we would have some file but the result is false might be due to uh, no internet no something went bad with during the uh, the transfer and we get a false we noted that we always broadcast into activity for snack bar action transfer cancel so we show snack bar to the user that the transfer was cancelled so he can dismiss that one if he uses the app and we also always trigger the cancel upload download transfer for a file name so with the file name i have the file uploads and file downloads in here and in that we also ensure we check this to false and it'll be called and removed for, from our google drive manager in here meaning these get removed in that phase they don't stay hang around hanging in there because the uh, the result false might be due to many reasons not just do it to us cancelling that okay so i think our dead ends are tied up in here so now we can clean up our old activity class we had this inner class in here which was extending our drive manager we're not following this anymore in this activity so we say delete like so so that was a bunch of code we don't need imports in here and we are not referencing this class in the main activity by any means seems correct so now we still need to ensure that we can actually also manually cancel these in our transfer tasks object we do have dedicated functions to remove upload listener or remove download listener and in here 
sorry, not that one. Cancel upload transfers. Cancel download transfers. So as we're only uploading, we have our cancel upload transfers and we have the hash map of our upload progress listeners in here, which were always added into hash maps. And when this gets called from external classes, we go through all listeners. It doesn't matter, we're going to cancel every last one of them by setting has permit false. This will lead into a situation in, in this instance of upload progress listener so that this gets false and we also trigger our own transfer cancel function and we get a callback into our service. We re start removing those progress and transit files and we kill this everlasting progress monitoring instance of media HTT uploader progress listener by throwing cancellation exception and a message user cancelled. So it'll be killed. It's not running in in the bit space anymore. Okay, so that's how we force this instance down. So if we call this every last one of those is gonna get killed. That's for sure. And we get the call back. Okay. And we also ensure that we always try to remove the transit file names. Meaning files in transit list gets cleared and the progress list gets cleared. Many places to clear these. Okay. Now, from which place do we actually call this function? Cancel. This should be called only from the service class. Let's see. It's still in the activity class, so we need to clear this one. Okay, definitely we don't want to call this anymore. This kind of a open function should not exist anymore. Okay, this used to be tied into a button. The button will not be in the activity anymore. Now we can remove that one. Okay, no references anymore in here. What about download transfer here? Okay, now I have both of them just to be sure, ready to go in here, in my service class. And we have registered a broadcast receiver to receive broadcast reaction requests for intent filters, cancel transfers. <coughs> and in this service, which is driving the Google Drive Manager, to work with broadcast receivers, we are registering this broadcast receiver object with that cancel transfers intent. So this is, you can come up with these intent names as you see fit. I just named this cancel transfers. Just ensure that in your manifest, you do declare your receiver as so and you list all the intents, intent filters that you are about to handle in your application. That, that ensures that it'll work. Okay. Now, there is still a way to uh, send that message in here. Somebody is going to send that broadcast receiver message in here from other place. So how are we going to do that? We need the receiver class. So somewhere in here we should have receiver, my receiver. And in here this on receive is first 
to uh, receive that cancellation intention and we are det detecting the action and then we forward that cancel transverse into our into our broadcast system okay and that way our running if we have any uh, file pro progress systems still going they can be cancelled when the user requests them to be cancelled okay and what is actually going to trigger this cancel request so my idea is so that the user has a notification running in here which shows how many files are in transfer and it will have just one button to cancel all if he wants to do so and that should send that broadcast request for our my receiver so we have to embed that cancellation button into our notification okay so we have created in here notification channel in our service create notification channel it can be low we don't want, want to make any noise alarms with this one so we create this channel with the channel id we give it a name and description and now we have created not notification channel so when this service gets started the on create creates these and registers the broadcast receiver to receive those messages in here okay then we have to uh, create another notification channel id it seems that i will need this or i might not so there's main and notification channel id okay and of course when we start i mean create foreground uh, uh, service we have to apply this immediately in the on create so the application has to come forward informing the user and we use our main channel that the service for file transfer has been started so the user will get a small icon to signal that it is running it is something that you just have to do with foreground service otherwise if you don't it'll get killed before it even starts that's how android handles these so in here we are then signaling the initial notification photodox tasks file transfers ongoing okay and we pass in the channel id in here we just have builder notification builder context this the channel id and we build the not initial notification that you have a running foreground service okay and we even have a small icon of this app and it has we are have a content intent with create pending intent and we want to point it into our main activity okay and we are saying that if somebody clicks that open main activity from that notification okay makes sense so the user gets into uh, directed into his app by clicking it okay so that's what it does so now that was the initial now we have a service which is handling our request so how does it get actually updates uh, what's happening in the background so we come back to the on start command and we are not even yet in the phase how to use the button in the notification that has to be created 
So let's assume now that this is the first time to starting this service. We get on start command and there is request of start. Okay, service is not yet running and we go through the initiate function. Okay, we said service in a started state. We even save the service state into set service state into our service state class, which is actually just saving the state into preferences. This ensures that it's permanent data until we change the state into a stopper. Okay. You can do this multiple ways to uh, keep the state of the background or foreground service. We set a wake clock to keep the service uh, running in while if, even if it takes a long time. And here we launch our while loop. And before we go into a monitoring mode in the while loop, which tracks all the progress states from the progress listeners, we actually do the single shot for handle transfer request. Okay. So this we went through in the beginning of the video. We always have to dig up the intent extras that we passed into the on start command of the service. We have the task type, file name and mime type, which then are passed into our upload request. And this upload request was the, the function that actually gets to start the drive manager upload files. Like so in here that we just went this big function. Okay. That's the one that shoots the file into the Google Drive. Okay. But now let's backtrack a bit in here and see how we are cycling in a while loop and making progress monitoring notifications. So there's maximum idle time and maximum connection time. So I want to be able to kill this loop. If it's just idling, there are no tasks. So we're always in the start of the loop. We're checking if any files are in transit anymore. If it's empty, we start deduction from the value of 10 else if it's not empty we always set it back to 10 so there's 10 second maximum idling time monitoring in here and these were the hash maps that i keep how i keep track how many files are still in the transfer progress okay then we are also monitoring if there is network connection. So I have a object instance of network connections and I'm pretty much asking, does this phone have online connection of any sort? This is how you can check that. Okay. If we don't have any online connection, we are deducting from connection timeout else we set it back to 10, back to default. Okay. And what do we do if in here, in the end of the loop, if max idle time has run out or max connection time has run out, we just stop this service. Okay. The service gets stopped by setting a service started false and we also save in the permanent memory of this prefs data store value false. 
so you can use shared preferences or anything else similar I just always know that it was stopped we release wake clock and we stop foreground by saying stop foreground remove this is Java instance class that you can directly call and you can directly call stop self like so so that'll kill this service okay and that's how you kill running service so this is called if idle time is running out connection time has run out or we force stop this while loop by destroying the scope default and then also in cancellation exception we call stop service okay <clears throat> so this won't be hanging around in an eternal loop in a coroutine scope so now the notification this part here in a loop so we pretty much are building a message if our file transfer list is empty we don't have any lists any files in transit we say hey ending service please wait and if we still have files in transit we're just gonna build the message by saying that hey file transfers and we get the count of files still in the hash map list ongoing so it can be file transfers anywhere from one to three pieces ongoing and it will just deduct the number gets uh, deducted every time we remove automatically those files from here by following our file progress listeners and then on each second that's the del delay of this loop we're just gonna say notify progress so what do we do in here notify progress we're passing in notification okay and this is the notification that we're creating create progress notification we pass in our main channel id title is photo docs tasks and the message is there it'll be either one okay and in here we are creating progress notification so this is how you actually get to use the button yeah that's why we have action intent we are implementing the button function in this notification here by saying that this intent will be action intent will be implemented it it is gonna is initiate my receiver with an action of cancel transfers so that's what the button will do it'll initiate this receiver to handle that action and we'll get to cancel all of them so remember that's the button action here action indent then we say pending indent pending indent get broadcast with this context we don't have add additional request codes but we have this specific action for a broadcast receiver and you have to put flag immutable or mutable in this case i don't know what what the difference is to be honest but it won't work any other way then we say action we create the uh the view of the action button action builder no special icon title will be called for the button cancel all tasks and this pending indent will be implemented within okay action is built then we finish build notification builder with the channel id and uh, we also set progress of max items in here 
well it's zero it's progress with this you can play to build your progress bar i'm just now ensuring that it'll just be animating but it doesn't show any real progress just numbers of uh, uh, files will be implemented in our text message here and set ongoing so user cannot dismiss that until we are finished and we set a small action icon within and we also set content intent if user clicks that notification we will all again be directed back into our main activity of an app in that case so as oh it, it pretty much like we're doing in in our initial notification in here so the app gets opened by our main activity okay so we're almost ready to test i know that one more thing that we need to add we're not actually handling these broadcast messages within our activity if the user happens to have the app open so we are pretty much passing in always for the upload result a snack message of value integer that i'm handling in my jetpack compose it's either success or cancel two options i am not handling this correctly in the activity so let's ensure that we get a visible message for the user okay so transfer result that's gonna be my key value for the snack value and uh, we have an intent of update item upload okay that has to be registered listened in the activity so in our main activity i did set up that already i have a broadcast receiver which is registering at least listening item upload but we have to add that into the register so in on create or in some place we have here register broadcast receiver broadcast receiver in the filters and our filter is passed in update item upload okay now this activity is handling correctly these broadcasts from any source now we have to add this also into our docs activity which is the view that you see in right here this is the main view it can now handle it and the docs activity we want it to in here so i am copy pasting A broadcast receiver in here all we gotta do now is hmm that's weird okay like so like so like so and that's the only thing we need in here and again we have to register this broadcast receiver in the on create so let's use quickly copy paste from main activity and we go into on create and let's register that one and always in on this on destroy we have to ensure we deregister how on earth 
Unregister. Yes, exactly like this. Unregister broadcast receiver. Now it's correctly in here. It won't cause any memory leaks or exceptions while this activity gets killed. Okay. Now, fingers crossed, we have we have to upload I mean, start this app first. And as you can see, we don't have any files in here. Uh, let's give this new name test report then. And let's first try with these apps. I mean images in here. We have upload request. Okay, compile. Wow, we have task running. We saw status of one file and now it's already killing itself. So our timeout is actually running in here. It linked to one killed. And we have a snack bar message. Transfer success in Google Drive Photodocs documents. That's the root folder system. Cool. And let's refresh our Google Drive. And I can't believe this worked. We have identical uh, report from those documents in here that we sent. Cool. The refactoring of the code into for the uh, upload progress listeners based on service is working. Now I want to test the cancel. <clears throat> we have to see it seems we have to add a whole lot of images in here so that it actually lasts longer. So let's see. Let's take I don't know images from this end let's at least double that amount. I don't know how many images this emulator can handle might crash. Do it to load. Okay, they need to be downloaded. Let's hope this emulator can handle this much images. Cool. Now there's a bunch of images in here. Now let's hope I can actually let's make this another name. 11 start upload compilation takes a little time and we pass it in here quickly cancel task and it should have canceled it's killing google drive transfer cancelled okay we get the message and timeout ran there and we shouldn't have that report in here it was named as 11 Cool, it is working. Now let's do this again. Compiling the file, pass it into background, uploaded pretty fast. And we should already have that in here. Oh, there it is. There was 70 something images. That's a big file. takes quite a while to render there all images were found objects cool okay guys there it is now it's time for me to clean this code mess up and uh, make sure that it is actually production ready. Like you can see, there was no message over there. But hey, that's about this. And uh, I hope you like it. And maybe you learned something from this mess. We'll be back. <laughs>